I asked my Discord community which official Games Workshop paint jobs they dislike the most, and then I tried to fix them. What's up fellow pigment pushers? Official paint jobs and box arts are an important thing in miniature painting. They're supposed to show the miniature off in a favorable light, but, and this is especially true for Games Workshop and other miniature companies that have a game attached to them. Meow. Meow. Okay. The paint job has to be balanced around uh, looking incredibly awesome, but also looking achievable. And the heavy metal style has become the epitome of this balancing act. Now, don't get me wrong, there is some great painters working at Games Workshop and I have seen firsthand during my trip to Nottingham for the Ever Chosen Finals in 2019. And a lot of the Warcry and Warhammer Underworlds boxes and warbands have really inspiring paint jobs. But all these painters work in a team and that team has to produce a coherent style with certain rules and restrictions. I think it's interesting that there is this tension between two extremes and that companies have to consider both of these aspects. Do you think Games Workshop actually takes this into consideration? Let me know in the comments. But all of this means sometimes we get better and sometimes we get simpler studio paint jobs. And I asked my Discord community which of these paint jobs they didn't like that much so I could pick the top five and think about ways to improve them as a fun little experiment. So let's see which pick is the first one. Okay, these guys. Get to the so they are so muscular, they have extra muscles on every part of their body. Also, we have to admit that this is a pretty old paint job. They're probably 20 years old, so this is kind of unfair, but uh, there's a lot to learn here. So let's do it. So one thing I already mentioned a couple of times is that you don't necessarily shade every recess and you don't necessarily just highlight every edge. It's been a thing that Games Workshop did for a long, long time. And only lately they made a bit of a move towards not doing that every time. So if we look at a couple of other paint jobs that came later, they made an effort to not just do that. So with this one, we still have a lot of deep recesses, but not everything is as deep everywhere on the body so they went a bit less deep up here they still try to frame all the muscles nicely with this um, edge highlight so readability is a thing here however we see that uh, there is some some weird edge highlights but we'll get to this later and then with the untamed beasts i feel like uh, they have it dialed in even better over here they still have the same definition with the really dark dividing lines in between i guess on the brighter skin it's a little bit better, so just very dark in the inside of the elbow, and then as it goes up, it fades a bit out. Down here, it's even less, so we don't have these dark lines. So there's definitely progress. If we look at this arm, for example, like we said, everything is defined in the same way. So what we want to do is to be a bit sensitive about uh, how dark the shadows have to be. So for example, all of this area, should probably be not as dark as it is because the shape of the lower arm um, yeah just integrates with the biceps on the here and it forms a bit of a straight edge and the actual shadow is only cast by the form of the biceps but there should not be a super visible shadow down here so we could go back to this color and find this a bit more this makes for a subtle definition of the anatomy and it doesn't draw all this attention and you don't get these thick lines. And then of course we need to tone down all of this and just work on the volumetric highlighting. We need to bring all of the skin color up a few steps and tone down the shaded areas because these harsh shadows look super unnatural and then we build up more contrast again by adding additional highlights. You need any reference, just look up how light interacts with the different shapes, with cylinders and um, with uh, spherical objects. Okay, with the last highlight, we need to be a bit more careful 
So you can use a tiny bit of, of white in, in these parts, um, but I recommend just putting very, very confined last highlights to uh, bring out the contrast even a bit more. For the t-shirt, I'm just picking out the base color and I'm mixing a brighter highlight and apply more of a senator light covering his shoulders and the belly part that's facing up. So this is a clear example that it's not always good to shade any recess, which a wash will always do. If you apply a wash, it always creeps into the recesses, regardless of whether it makes sense to shade it or not. You want to control where the paint goes. And the first step here is to clean up a lot of the mess. Usually this step alone makes any part of the miniature look better, as you can see, simply because you take away these huge unnatural shadows. We can keep a bit of that shadow in the wrinkles next to the nose. And once the base color is established neatly again, we can start to mix brighter highlights. And I'm defining the cheekbones, back of the nose and, and upper lip area and so on. When this is done, we can give the face more character and credibility by adding shades and a bit of red color to the cheeks. Something interesting is that depending on how white we paint the brighter highlights, we can make a face or feature appear wider or smaller. So just to compare this, I'm going to get rid of it again. Now the face looks a lot wider and here it looks a bit slimmer again. Using a mix of uh, skin color and, and the black, we can mix a gray that will look like the shadow of a beard. And using an off-white to paint these last highlights on all of the areas, we can draw everything together again. I think the mini would benefit from a more intense camo pattern. So in the first step, it's good to build the highlights of the main color, in this case, the green. And then we just fill in the spots with an interesting other color, in this case, orange brown. Okay, with this one, I don't think I would change a lot. I think this is a, a problem of readability and everything just looks too samey. Um, so I guess it's fine because they wanted this to you know, come out of the jungle. So there's a lot of green tones everywhere, but everything just melts together and it's a visual mess because the model is already really busy. And if you make all the details too samey, then that's just adding to the confusion. And then play around with colors a bit. So I'm going to add a lot more red, a bit of magenta maybe. Um, oh yeah, so I'm after a bit of an orange, I think this is fine. Let's see how that looks. I think that already looks so much better because you can clearly see that there's something sitting there, um, living being sitting there that contrasts against um, the rest of the green and going for a red even is a complementary contrast. So it makes everything stand out. And I think it's in line with the red feathers. So the feathers are at least on the outlines, it's a tiny bit of red. And I think the, the red skin tone fits perfectly. I like this better, I think, than just the grass green that we had before. This is a bit more vibrant. Let's just experiment with also doing the limbs. Yeah, I think that's actually better. So I think that's an easy fix and we already have a tiny bit of that red in there with the gem. So just adding more red uh, doesn't really change anything. There's still a lot of green and turquoise going on. So the general theme stays alive and uh, we have this complementary contrast that actually tells us there's something sitting there that's not the throne. So I like that a lot better. Okay, someone submitted this one again. But I think it's a good example and we can do a lot with this. Just working on the skin tone. I know they wanted to go for something pale, but you can still have something that is not looking alive and not make it just one pale color. and start with the chest plate. So I want to add a bit more variety, just a different base color here. 
And the good thing is we can still leave this armor rather dark and pale if we wanted to, but we can make it look a lot less boring by highlighting it in a bit of a non-metallic pattern. Highlighting that middle section towards the edge on one side and having a dark area on the section next to it. We can make it a lot more interesting by adding a bit of irregularity, by adding a subtle texture, which makes it look more characterful and of course we can add more edge highlights only we keep them dynamic which means we focus the bright color on areas that would reflect more light like um, apex points of curves even if they're inverted curves and these spiky sections as well as inverted edges i talked a lot about non-metallic metal being a bit more of an illustration like technique in my latest video so if you want to refresh your knowledge on non-metallic metal, here it is. I'm defining all other sections of the armor in the same way. And then when I want just a little more spice with a color shift, I'm picking a red in this case from an area that is already in there to limit my palette. And where the armor plates are really dark, I'm adding a red shade, which instantly makes this look a lot more interesting. And speaking of that, the shield also is highlighted in the typical heavy metal edge highlight style which we can easily make more interesting by applying a highlight pattern that would be more natural by just highlighting all these areas that face up and keeping the ones facing down shaded the serpent on the shield actually it looks quite interesting already i just want to bring all the shadows a bit more in line with the darkness of the other shadows around it and i'm totally fine with how the weapon looks and the other metallic parts for the hair, I'll admit I was a bit uninspired, but I wanted to make it pale. Maybe it ended up a bit too pink. It is what it is. Can't always nail everything. I just apply some highlights and shadows and that's gonna be it for this figure. Okay, this one is an interesting choice. On first sight, it doesn't look bad. Things that I really like are the white parts with the, the subtle shading and um, the interesting battle damage. It's really nice because it's really thin. It has this dynamic brush stroke. It's not applied everywhere. This wrinkle here, this fold, is uh, highlighted uh, in a more volumetric way. So this, as this bends forward, it, it gets a highlight. And then as this bends downwards, inwards, it gets a shade. The skin, I think, is a little bit flat. And like I said, it's not really bad. I just think there is room for improvement. And it's good to know a few general things about how to improve single models in case you wanted to invest a bit more time into character models or the centerpieces of your army. So the things that stand out right away is, again, the pants. Um, they are just edge highlighted. I think this could benefit massively from applying a wider highlight on the pants. This also makes the shadows shine a lot more and it just increases the contrast right off the bat uh, and just makes everything a bit more interesting. We can uh, go a bit brighter on some of these uh, more extreme folds. Once the overall light situation is established, I add a bit of texture because this is probably not the most maintained pair of pants in the world. One problem that I have here is that the skin is the same brightness in very dark areas, very deep areas, and in higher up, more exposed areas. As you can see on my eyedropper tool here, they're almost identical. So this area under the arm needs to be shaded more in general. And then I go over the whole green skin area and I define these areas in a way that we already went over when we talked about volumetric highlights with the Katoshans. This instantly adds, yeah, an interesting luminosity and credible contrast. Now, something they already did on the original paint job was to add color variation by adding a skin color. I want to take this one step further and make everything a bit more interesting at the same time. See how just the thin layer in the cheek and belly area and also on the fingers improves this uh, composition massively already. A little red shade under the cheek makes the bright areas of the face stand out even more. I decided to highlight the scales volumetrically too, which means they need to be brighter since more or less all of them face up and only the ones changing angle as the, the area curves down, I leave some of them darker. I didn't think too much about which color to use, but the huge spikes in the back, I just want to add something other than gray because 
gray is a really boring color to look at and nothing in reality usually is just gray so before i went back to the scales i just highlighted that with a bit of a yellowish tone note how i check the angles of the individual scales and i define them according to this angle like i mentioned a few seconds ago i hope this becomes a bit more clear now Initially, I said I like the white a lot, but after we've built up all of these highlights and more shadows, I think we can treat this area just a tiny bit too. So we have two options. We could go towards pure white on the highlights or making everything a bit darker using this rust colored brown. And of course, we could do both too. The red element on the belt looks really weird just having the edge highlights surrounding a really dark area. So I added a gradient that looks like this and also a bit of texture to add more information to this area that is otherwise really boring. And I like it a lot. I think this makes everything look more interesting. And the belts suffer from the same principle of let's just do two edge highlights, with one with a darker color and one with a brighter color, and it looks the same at the top and at the bottom. So I'm adding these line patterns uh, that should convey the feeling of old and cracked leather. And conveniently, he has me paint these lines a bit brighter with a second pass. In some areas, we can add additional highlights. I think there's one more trick to make the weapon more interesting. Right now, it's just really dark and undefined. So why not add a bit of a gradient in these metal parts and some shine in the front and then make one of these edges a lot brighter. Next up is Belakor, and I know that he's the Dark Master, but did they have to make him so dark that you can't even see his hand against the wing? Minus 10 on the readability. So with the old model, you have the gold breaking up the monotony, which I'm not sure if uh, this does the same thing because it's just grayscale. Everything is gray on this model and using gray metallics doesn't really help either. You have a clear distinction in the front so the main body looks different from the wings it's still not super clear to see what's going on but it's a lot better if we pull down the saturation and make it a black and white image you can see that there's not a lot of contrast anywhere not really a focal point that the eye is drawn to and then can start exploring could have done this for all that i care and everything else is desaturated, sword, blues and, and purples are desaturated and also the loincloth. And you can't even make out the base properly and what's going on there. So let's see what we can make better. So if something is too monotonous, we have two options. We can add variety by adding color. And this can be subtle as long as it's not just shades of gray. And we can add contrast within the shapes and on the outline of shapes. Of course, we can also combine the two. And of course, we can also combine the two. For the main body, I wanted a brighter color. Maybe the skin on the chest is a bit softer than the areas on the back. And the upper leg where the spikes are coming out. Jeez. So for the main body, I wanted a brighter color. Maybe the skin on the chest is a bit softer than the areas on the back and the upper leg where the spikes are coming out. I chose a desaturated green to highlight the muscles. And I also added a bit of this color to the biceps area and the lower arm where no scales are present. Keeping the limbs dark, which will contrast nicely against this, this brighter chest area. And I just keep mixing a brighter shade of the green and I keep highlighting these muscles in the volumetric style. If you look at a color wheel, then the desaturated purple, uh, which is somewhere over here, is actually a uh, complementary color to green. So using a desaturated green, we are right on track for a nice color harmony. And I even exaggerate some edges here because it's a really large model. And in reality, it would be like so much bigger than a human being. So all of this needs to be really exaggerated. The horns are really dark too. And in my opinion, they don't stand out enough from the rest of the gray mass. So I increase their brightness overall and I also work out these details a bit more. Again, I want to keep the palette limited. So to shade the face, I'm looking for a color that is already present. Um, so I checked which color the subtle shade up here was and conveniently it was a magenta that I was fine with using. So I painted the shadows under the cheekbones 
in magenta and i think it works really well and after that i just wanted to outline the face a bit more so i was adding uh, light gray to the cheekbones and everything that outlined the face studying the color of the wings i noticed that there is a slight shade of yellow in there so i wanted to try how this would look even though it would probably not have been my initial impulse to pick this color for the wings but strangely i think it worked out quite okay however i also wanted a skin color shade in there in order to show that this is a softer membrane like material now you can see that i add a bit of a pattern by leaving darker rims around the spots and if i was painting this one in real life and after this video i almost want to i would try to work a lot more with these patterns but let's stick to just working with colors right now i also decided to keep the purple they already had in there and extend it a bit further down i wasn't 100 percent convinced but i left it for now and i decided to do something with the weapon i didn't want to keep it so pale and i know it's maybe somewhat okay to paint it this dark because of its lore but i really wanted the sword to play a part in the composition and not just be another great detail so i picked out a turquoise and added a bit of a demonic inner glow and then added straight up black to the stirations to pay tribute to the shadows it's phasing in and out of and like i said adding some brighter value parts to the blacks will make these more visible and understandable and then i decided to tone down some of the yellow again towards the end of the wings i think this is the right balance keeping and i think this is the right balance and it's keeping the focus on the upper body and face after adding some more purple i wanted to push the composition a bit further with the pale green in the composition i thought a saturated red glow from below would make for a great effect so i picked out an almost hull red color and i started to define all shapes facing the ground starting with the base because it would be lit by the biggest portion of this osl and it would fade out as it goes further up i didn't want this to be too overpowering but to complement the composition so i kept it rather subtle i added the red to the tip of the wings and all parts of the muscle shapes that were pointing or curving down this already looked really good but just like normal highlights our osl needs a bit of variety so i took this orange and covered a bit less area as i brightened all the lid parts yeah so i tried to not i tried to be a bit more subtle so not to overwhelm everything but i think especially in this interaction here with the green it looks super nice One last idea I wanted to try, and I think it would be fine to just keep the, the Chaos Star on the chest the way it is, but I wanted this star to glow from within. So I masked the area off and I applied shades of turquoise, starting with a darker version and, and covering less and less area, ending up with a really bright layer on the inside. I rounded everything out with a bit of halo and then I call them done. And like I said, I really want to paint Belacore now. So this was the top five paint jobs my Discord wanted me to improve. I really like these exercises because it helps me with coming up with color schemes for my own figures and I can try a lot of compositional themes and color theory without having to plaster a mini full of color just to try and see if something works as always i hope the video was helpful to you and you learned something you can of course help me out by leaving a like or you could watch one of my other videos like the one where i critique my viewers miniatures or the one where i critique my own miniatures my own golden demon winners from 10 years ago thanks a lot to the patreon gang for supporting me you guys are the reason this channel exists i can't stress that enough if you want to support me but don't like patreon you can always support me through the affiliate links that I put in the description of each video. And you can give me a bit of revenue while buying the things you will need for your hobby anyway. Thanks for watching. Keep pushing that pigment. And don't be afraid. It's only paint. No wait, it was Photoshop this time, but...